Southern Conference and Tom Richards from the Missouri Valley works today's game and we're set to go. Syracuse in the white uniforms with orange numerals and Tennessee with a light orange and white numerals. It's orange on both sides, the predominant color. Bowie jumps it against freshman Reggie Johnson. It's interesting, Dick, how much taller Bowie is than Johnson, even though he's listed only two inches taller in the program. And we're underway with Syracuse. Dale Shackelford controlling the tap. Williams is the playmaker. Extremely fast, number 22 with the ball. I think Syracuse expected Tennessee to start a little bit of zone, but it's man to man all the way. Kelly working inside on guard. Bowie outside. Well, this is the player. Kelly to Williams. Williams to Burns. This is Williams driving. Oh, he scoops in a flying one-hander from underneath. That's what Jimmy Beheim wanted, get him off to a fast start. Turnover, Shackelver to Williams. Look at that speed. Right around Darden, but he can't hit it. Rebound to Syracuse. Tennessee a little tight so far. An errant pass, and there was a rebound they should have had. Zone defense, 1-3-1 one, one by Tennessee on the out of bounds. Darden, the point man, that's Marty Burns, the left-hander not there, and a rebound to Johnson of Tennessee. Volunteers on the attack, Runfeld. Foul, holding on Shackelford of Syracuse, the first foul of the game, a shooting violation. You can, excuse me, Dick, there's Ray Mears on the sideline. Here you're going to see a guy going in there, Ernie Grunfield, just so strong. He's getting the ball inside. They had part of the ball. Actually, it didn't look like too bad a block, but being as strong as he is, it looks like you've got to put too much power on to stop him. Grunfeld, who uses all of that body in shooting the free throw, 81% on the year. He was second in the Southeastern Conference in scoring to his teammate Bernard King. Grunfeld scored 23 a game, and King had 26-point average. It remains two to one Syracuse. <laughs> Kelly, probably Syracuse's best shooter. Not there, and there's King hauling down his first rebound. Darden runs the offense. Renfeld with the ball. Blocked by Bowie. Good defensive play. And Oh, oh that's Grunfeld hustled, and the ball goes out of bounds off Ernie Grunfeld. Look at the size of that man, and he is all man. No better competitor in the world than this young fella right here. Look at him go for that loose ball. All-American or not, he plays hard. Syracuse with a 2-1 to one lead, a minute and a half gone. And it's 2-1-2 two, two type zone by Tennessee right now. They play an awful lot of variances on their zone defense. There's the best shooter against the zone, number 11, Kelly. Jim Beheim said if we have a weakness, we don't have a lot of good shooters. Kelly's his best shot maker. You can see the matchup with Mike Jackson over on that side. Kelly, tough shot. He had to hesitate. Bowie gets the rebound. And a tip in by Shackelford. Four to one, Syracuse. One of the best things to do against Tennessee's zone, of course, to pack a lot of guys on the board. Here's Syracuse going to 2-3 zone of their own. Darden running the offense. That's Mike Jackson on the side. You pay too much attention to Grunfeld and King, and then Jackson will shoot the eyes out. There's Jackson, and he hits it. Four to three. First scoop for Tennessee. Comes with two minutes and 20 seconds gone in the game. I think a couple of things to look for Syracuse to do right now. They're a good passing ball club, and they're a good offensive rebounding club. So even though they don't have outside shooting, they attack zone fairly well. Cuts down a lot of zone. Oh, Kelly's effect, uh, excuse me, a Williams effect on this as a quickness. No basket had it gone. Traveling call against Williams. And it's Tennessee looking for its first lead with almost three minutes gone in the game. Assembly Hall at LSU. Still the 2 3 zone. That's Mike Jackson. Rebound Grunfeld. He'll take it to the iron. Blocked by Bowie. Rebound King. Blocked again by Bowie. And a foul on Johnson of Tennessee. Oh, my. Roosevelt Bowie. Ray Mears can't believe that big kid, a freshman, blocked two shots. He got a piece of both of them, and that's the second one right there. He just cleaned house on the inside. Great rebounding and blocked it. Shot block. He's from a small town in New York. Only a couple of thousand people in the city, so he didn't have many big people to play against. Here's Bowie. He can't hit by Johnson, so Reggie Johnson returns to Davis. 4-3, Syracuse 
lead. Not anymore. Bernard King gives Tennessee its first lead, five to four. King does a great job against Jones finding a good seam to create a passing lane, and then when he gets it inside, he's just devastating. You can see Tennessee really has that zone backed inside. And Kelly and Syracuse jumps back in front, six to five, as Larry Kelly gets his first bucket. He's averaging 10 points a game. Basket is it allowed. Bernard King scored it. It is. Foul on Bowie. King has scored from inside. Uh, anytime you see teams play a lot of zone, if they're really playing well, they don't allow people to penetrate outside. They play still tough on the ball in both cases there. Syracuse allowed penetration in the dump inside to King. And as I mentioned, when he gets in there, it's all over. All-American Bernard King. He has five points, and Tennessee leads eight to six with nearly four minutes gone in the game. And they're pressing full court, one, two, one, one. Uh, it's the fourth defense they've used, and the game is, what, four minutes old. Burns helping out in backcourt. That's the man they want with the ball, Williams. Shackleford had a shot. Here comes Fremso. Good pass, but it's deflected out of bounds. The man spotted Reggie Johnson, but the quick hands of the Syracuse defense deflected it away, and it'll be Mike Jackson triggering in the inbounds pass. Into King. Grunfeld back to King. Tough shot. Won't fall. Reggie Johnson. No, no basket. Interference, no basket. Ball refused to go down. We saw in the first game, won by the University of Detroit over Middle Tennessee. These rims are very tight. You have to hit them dead center or they won't go down. Syracuse looking for a time bucket. Man to man now by Tennessee. They really do switch their defense. King knocks the ball out of bounds. Syracuse lost only three games to St. Bonaventure, to West Virginia, and to Maryland. Pass inside, almost too good a pass. It surprised Bowie, and it goes to Tennessee. I think one of the big things Syracuse is going to have to do is recognize when Tennessee does switch defenses as to get the ball back out and get into their offense. Johnny Dart makes it 10 to 6, Tennessee. First basket for Dart. They pretty well leave him alone. He doesn't shoot that much, and he gets that 20-footer, he can hurt you. Bowie, way off the mark, foul on Shackelford over the top. Dale Shackelford has the foul, his second foul, and we have a timeout. Exactly five minutes have been played here at LSU, where the score is the Volunteers of Tennessee 10, the Orangemen of Syracuse 6. most viable player of the game scholarship award that announcement late in the game it's Tennessee 10 Syracuse 6 five minutes have been played volunteers with the ball and the lead by four and Syracuse out of their zone back to man to man great D blocked by Burns and I believe a foul on Burns looks as if he got the ball must have hit him with a body he did he get a little body but it was good defensive movement there a good switch Burns picked up well first foul on Burns and it sends Mike Jackson to the line for Tennessee. Jackson, a 6th place senior from Nashville. Nope, they're gonna call a foul before the shot? It must have been with the body because it looked like he was in the process of shooting. Now back to the zone again. Tennessee recognizing well. Tennessee has superior height advantage with the exception of Bowie in the middle. They're pretty much taller at every position. Darden slipping inside. And it's uh, Bernard King with a tough shot from the baseline. 12 to 6, Tennessee with 14 and a half minutes remaining in this first half. Some of those ball handling drills that Tennessee used before the game came into play there on that loose ball. King with a quick hand. Williams way outside and drills it. And Jimmy Williams makes it 12 to 8. 
Williams has four. Not supposed to be a good shooter. Jackson gets it right back for Tennessee. Mike Jackson. Great pass by King. Williams uses a lot of arts, and it's Renfeld clearing it out to Jackson. And Jackson scores. The foul is on whom? Basket good. Foul, I believe, on Jackson. Yes, Jackson gets the foul, but he also gets the hook. And the score is 16 to 8. Great pass that time by the other All-American. Jackson doing a fine job holding his balance in the air. Good call by the ref, but a good play by Jackson. And a great two-handed pass. Good call right there. Number 55 entering the Syracuse lineup is Lewis Orr, a 6'8 freshman from Cincinnati, Ohio. He's 6'8 and 165 pounds. There's a half-court 1-3-1 one, one trap by Tennessee. They got the ball the last time they used it. Little guy Williams inside to score at only 5'10". Williams now has six. Tennessee leading by six. 13 minutes remaining before the intermission. Well, you've got man to man, and Orr is on King inside. Darden dumps it off to Grunfeld, and Ernie Grunfeld scores. And a whistle underneath. Foul on Syracuse away from the ball. It's going to be on Louis Orr, and he's He's really in tough shape in there because King is an awful lot stronger. As you can see, Orr lacks some power on the inside, but he's an outstanding young freshman, too. Tennessee with a chance at a four-point play. Jackson, the open man, good fake. And Tennessee goes into a 10-point lead with 13 minutes left in the half. What people will really appreciate, a total ball player ought to love watching Bernard King. He's made about four or five great speeds. Burns in trouble. Hardy Burns can't hit. hit. And a foul pushing Grunfeld of Tennessee. Grunfeld has his first foul. Ernie, of course, uh, one of the distinguished members of the gold medal winning U.S. Olympic basketball team. Kazika knows the uh, Olympic trials and in the games. He played primarily a defensive ball player, so what kind of a team man he is. Or to Kelly, or coming outside the big freshman. Now he'll cut through. Good defense by Tennessee. Or gets Johnson in the air and draws the foul from Reggie Johnson, the freshman center from the Atlanta, Georgia area. It's his second foul. Good smart play by Orr right here. He has the fake, gets Johnson up in the air, then goes up and gets the shot up, almost makes the shot right here. Just a good smart play. Or off the bench has averaged 10 points a game this year and is the best field goal percentage shooter on the Syracuse club, 58%. Not bad from the line either, 76%. Kind of an interesting recruiting story too, Dick. Uh, coming out of Cincinnati all the way up to Syracuse. Jim Beheim said that actually got a call from a friend down there said you had to look at this uh, Lewis Orr. And so he said, I had one scholarship left. I hustled down there and I'm glad it is. They liken him to uh, future Rudy Hackett. They'll take that, I'm sure. Can't hit the free throws, however. And it's Tennessee. Grunfeld leading a 3-2 break. Darden throws it away. That time he didn't quite have control. Tried to make a tough play after having the loose ball pickup. We pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. Tennessee 20, Syracuse 10. Ross Kendall, number 20, is in the game for the first time for Syracuse. Trying to get a little more experience into the ball game and some outside shooting with all of these switching defenses by Tennessee. They need some guys that have seen it before. Jimmy Williams can't hit it, and a foul. It's on Jackson of Tennessee. Mike Jackson draws the foul. It is his second foul. Time has been called with 12 minutes remaining in the first half. The Volunteers of Tennessee have jumped into the early lead. They're ahead of Syracuse by 10. Hey, if you love coffee like I do, you probably drink hundreds of cups a year. And wouldn't it be nice if every cup were perfect every time? I mean, this one, exactly like that one. Well, everyone can be if you get Norelco's Dialabrew. It makes coffee exactly the way you want it. 
Light, medium, dark. Pay less, you can pay more. But you can't buy a finer coffee maker. And only Norelco has Dial-A-Brew. Dial-A-Brew. So much flair, so debonair. With a touch of class. Do you know what Mercury Monarch has that all the small cars don't? Touch of class. Only Monarch has the look of a Lincoln Continental. And the smooth ride. <laughs> year for the National Collegiate Basketball Championship, but that's pretty young compared to golf this year in its 80th year, and the oldest is tennis, 93 years. So we've just talked about three. Three of 39 NCAA championship events in 18 different sports. We hope you'll see an NCAA championship. Preceding announcement furnished by the National Collegiate Athletic Association. Williams hits one free throw to cut Tennessee's lead to nine. Dick, they talked about a lot of scoring in this ball game, but there's eight minutes gone, and we only have 32 total points. Grenfell clears it to Bernard King against Bowie. So that's passing. Boy, he's got the real hands and eyes. And then he gets it back and scores it. What you give, you shall receive. 22-12. Very unselfish ball club. Even though they do have two superstars, they give the ball up well. That's right, you think you might need two balls with guys like Grunfeld and King, but they are very happy to give it to their teammates. That's Kendall getting his first hoop. He's a 6'2 junior from Russell, New Jersey. Boy, good move by Johnny Dart. Jackson hits, and Tennessee is hot. Jackson now with 10 points to lead Tennessee. And Jimmy Beheim says, let's get out of the press. They're attacking it too well. Tennessee really playing well so far in this ball game. And they're back to this 2 3 type zone defense. Syracuse trailing by 10 as we approach the halfway mark of this first 20 minute period. Kendall again off the mark. Bowie kept it alive, and there's Reggie Johnson ripping it free for Tennessee. Darden at 5 10, feeds it inside to King. Get that soft bounce. Marty Burns saves it for Syracuse. I think what Syracuse is going to have to do is start getting that ball inside a little more so they can get in some offensive positioning to get some rebounds on second shots. They don't have shooters in the ball game. They're going to have to get the ball inside a little more. In case you're wondering, the surface is not wood. It's a tartan surface here at LSU. Burns loses it out of bounds. A lot of contact, but no foul. They went inside, though, and he had an opportunity, just lost the hand. Shackelford comes in, and Burns is given a rest for Syracuse. Number 33, Dale Shackelford, a starter. 24-14, Tennessee. Jackson, he's been hot. Boy, lots of battling in there. Shackelford saves it. It goes off King's shoe to Bowie, and this is Williams. Oh, what a move! Oh, my! Jimmy Williams! some super quickness. Now you see me, now you don't. Ten points now for Williams. King might be called for backing in, and I believe he was. That's a good call. King was jamming his way in. Look at Williams, and he's playing against Johnny Dart, who's also super quick. Hey, where's that ball? It's gone. Boy, he is stuck. 24 to 16. Remember him in the national finals a couple of years ago, and he was straight out to San Diego also. He scored 19 against North Carolina in the regional victory for Syracuse. And Shackelford, a tough shot, and King falls it in. He knows how to position himself. Darden, oh, can't be saved. Runfeld tried to save it. Bowie came up with it. This is Orr. That could have been a bad one right there. Shackelford. Kendall inside. Can't hit it. King gets another rebound. He is tough. Darden as we go end to end. Oh, what a pass. And a foul is on Syracuse. He gets the foul on this play. Darden really looking over the whole court. Jimmy Williams moved over. He moved into the play at the last minute. You've got to give the, the guy an opportunity to get through there. Good call. That's the sixth team foul on Syracuse. So both teams with six. And from now on, we'll have the players going to the line with a one and one. First foul on Williams. Intercepted by Orr. And there's the lead pass to Williams against Reggie Johnson. And he gets it in there anyway. And the, he was facing a man a foot taller than he. 
He has a dozen points. Syracuse has cut Tennessee's lead to six with nine minutes left in the first half. Foul is called Shackleford of Syracuse. That'll send Brentfeld to the line. Brentfeld deciding he's going to take a man one on run right here. He's already got Shackleford beat, and there's where the push took place. Brentfeld, watch him right here with all that strength, still trying to get the shot up to the basket. And despite the fact he is constructed like a football player, Billy, he puts the ball on the floor so well, uses both hands very effectively. Sure does. He's been kind of held in tow a little bit here so far. Brentfeld shooting one and one. One for two in the game. 25, 18 the score. Five points for Grunfeld. And Tennessee back on top by eight. Beheim looking for the combination that can start putting some points on the board. That's been their trouble. There's the inside game. Marty Burns getting the bucket. Burns averaging 10 points a game for Syracuse. They have six men averaging around 10 to 14 points a game. That is a team without a big scoring star, but everyone can put it down. Now they're back in the 2-3 type zone. Jackson way off the mark. Rebound Kendall, and he throws it away. 26-20, Tennessee. Grenfell to King. Blocked beautifully by Orr. Look at that King hustle. And he knocks it out of bounds. Good block right here by Grunfeld on an excellent pass inside. Look at King getting his position, but great block right there by Lewis Orr. Way off the mark, Syracuse, but underneath is Kendall to score. Ross Kendall at 6-2, gets the bucket, and it's 26-22. Grenfell back to get to Tennessee. Here's your All-America player. He says enough of that, and he gets Tennessee on the board and the six-point lead for the Volunteers. I think Syracuse is finding a way to score right now. Get the ball inside, trying to use a little bit of their offensive rebounding power. Burns to Orr, inside, and knocked away. Picked up by Orr, and then he'll be tied up by Grunfeld. Grunfeld and King both down on the floor. Orr is 6'8", and Grunfeld 6'6". Orr should have the advantage on the tip. Seven and a half minutes left in the first half. We'll be back at Grandstand in New York at halftime, and now good look at how they'll pair up in the regional first round, the semifinals, at four sites starting Thursday night. Like a face-off in hockey there. They both a little... Well, Grenfeld won the tap. Johnson to Dart. There's King. Traveling on King. That was say he had to try to catch the ball with the fingertips and still get his feet in position to score. And you can see that's exactly what he was doing. Dick getting those feet in position and he keeping his eye on the ball. Just a real gifted athlete. Now we saw Marcus Johnson, the great All-American forward at UCLA yesterday, Bernard King, named on that same first team All-America by the coaches. Bill Drew misses the shot, and then the foul, I believe, on Jackson. And if it is, that could be a very important foul in this game. The third foul on Michael Jackson for pushing off. There are those live the baskets. Foul. There's the foul right there. Good call by the official. We have a timeout with seven minutes plus remaining in this first half. It's Tennessee in front of Syracuse, 28-22, as we return you now to our studios for this message. We'll have a lot more basketball action for you and report at halftime. Terry Crosby, number 30, 6'4", sophomore from Toledo, Ohio, has replaced Mike Jackson, the first player in the game, with three personal fouls. Crosby averaging four points a game. And at the line is Ross... Kendall of Syracuse. Another fellow with tournament experience in Syracuse club that has been in the 10 CA playoffs. It seems like every year they're building quite a tradition there in basketball. Five consecutive years, in fact, Billy, and only Marquette and UCLA can make that claim. 28-24 the score. So Syracuse down by 10 has pulled within four. They've gone to their inside game. It's kind of interesting. When you get a lead like Tennessee had, you kind of get a false enthusiasm that you're playing a lot better than the other club, and yet you don't have a big working margin. Grunfeld, is he called for a charge? He is. Ernie Grunfeld has his second foul. But both Bernard King and Grunfeld, who are aggressive.
aggressive offensive players have been hit with a charging foul, and no coach likes to see that. That may be the most penalizing foul of all because you're also giving up the ball as well as tagging a, a top player with a penalty. Syracuse with a hoop can be within two. Louis Orr, line drive, 28-26. Orr has his first bucket. You know, Syracuse is doing this with only two starters in the ballgame. Tennessee's lead down to two. Grenfell's, he has it. Boy, he, he looks so confident with that shot. Grenfell oh, has the nine points now. And he's smooth on the big shots, too. That was one they had to have, and he just put it right through there. Or this is Bill Drew played at Notre Dame two years ago. And he scores. Drew, a 6'5 junior from Comac, New York, has his first hoop. They're doing a good job keeping the ball away from Bernard King. Louis Orr really shadowing him inside in their 2 1 2 zone. Wherever he goes, they're staying right with King. Crosby to King. Underneath, Reggie Johnson. Good play, but he can't. Oh! that Crosby come in there. Crosby, or was that King? It was Bernard King. He was going to put that one away. He's got that end of the building is still shaking. Well, here he's coming from the weak side, actually. Look at him. He thought he had that one stuff. He was really up in the air. Dick, you know what I like about him against his zone is that he always looks for the open area. He wasn't getting the ball down low, so he moved up to the foul line area to get it. Louis Orr looking for the tying basket. He gets inside, but he's on the baseline, no basket. He had the ball on the baseline, and that cost Syracuse the tie. There's young Jim Bayheim, 32 years old. He was a roommate and teammate of Dave Bing in some glory years at Syracuse. Inside is King. Tennessee, 32. Syracuse, 28, with five and a half minutes left. King has 11. Scored that one off the high post, set a little screen for Darden, and goes inside. He just he knows where to go. Bill Drew dumps it off nicely to Burns, who scores. Good assist by Drew. Burns now has four. Oh! Foul, I believe, on the offensive player, Crosby. I'll tell you, this Lewis Orr, uh, he went up there to block that shot after the foul, and he doesn't look like he can withstand punishment, but he's doing a great job. The Tennessee brain trust and disbelief has received the word that Crosby has been charged with the offensive foul. His first. There's Ray Mears, 49 years old, looking for his 400th collegiate victory today. And he hasn't had too much success in NCAA play in bringing Tennessee clubs here before. He's 0-3 in tournament play. Williams can't hit it. Look at him go after the ball, though. But it goes out of bounds. Last touch by Williams. Number 11 returns to the Syracuse lineup. Starter Larry Kelly, and out goes Jimmy Williams. Tennessee leading 32 to 30 with five minutes left in this half. See if Tennessee goes man to man with Williams out of the ball game because now Syracuse has two good shooters in the ball game at the guard spot. King to Reggie Johnson. Johnson not there. Foul on Crosby over the top. Terry Crosby has his second foul as he is up for Mike Jackson, who has three fouls. And the game certainly changed when Jackson went out of there, Billy. It certainly did. That time, Marty Burns getting excellent defensive position on the boards. And just a good Syracuse basketball team. It looked like they were going to get blown out early, but just good confidence. Some great substituting by Jim Beheim, and they're right back into it. Burns could tie it up with these two free throws. 32-31. I'd be real interested see if Tennessee would go ahead and press the Syracuse club that's on the court right now because they're without their ball handler at the present moment. Burns has six points and the game is even at 32. So Syracuse has made up 10 points in the last 10 minutes. Inside, Bernard King fouled, reaching in. Syracuse, it appeared to be against Kendall. We'll wait for the call. Number 20, Ross Kendall has the foul. I think I don't know how the rest of this game's going to go, but so far in the ball games we've seen, the officiating the NCAA play have been outstanding so far. As has been the case with the players, the best in the nation, earning the right to be here. So it has been with the men in those zebra shirts. They have shown great class and talent and under the most difficult circumstances. 
They know how important every whistle is to these youngsters. Bernard King hammers in a couple of free throws to send Tennessee back on top, 34-32. They're going to stay with the zone, and this is the this is really Syracuse's best club on the floor to play against the zone. They've got good shooters in there and a good inside game. Burns is short, and it's Rempel rebounding. Darden on the run. King, you could hear him say, oh, 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 I want it. And he got it, but couldn't score it. That's his favorite shot inside. Roosevelt Bowie has handled the ball very little on offense, the big center for Syracuse. He has a sword. Oh, traveling on Kelly. And the score remains at 34-32. Less than four minutes remaining in this half. Bowie is the only starter in the game for Syracuse. And Reggie Johnson, his counterpart for Tennessee. Neither center has scored, which is an unusual statistic. Darden trying to feed it underneath. Orr made the defensive play ahead to Bill Drew. Oh, no, that's Kendall. They close the layup. Kendall loses the layup and, and now picks it off to Bowie who scores. And that other way, the Tennessee fans can't believe it. But it says two <laughs> guys behind. It counts for two. And the game is tied at 34. Looks I thought like we had a swimming meet there for a while. Looks like he had it for five seconds. Front foul to Crosby. Not there, or he's done a good job on the board since coming in. Syracuse looking for the lead. It would be the first time since the game was four to three. Starting on Kendall. Not a good play by Kendall. Had no business going in there. Second foul on Ross Kendall. That caused Syracuse the ball, and it'll be Tennessee heading to the other end with three minutes remaining. He was the third guard. Uh, when, when he played in San Diego two years ago. So this guy's got a lot of experience. You don't expect him to make a play like that. Been a good first half, and they play to a tie after the first 17 minutes. Syracuse and Tennessee. Look at that ball fake by Darden. He gets the whole zone to move by some good head and ball fakes out there at the point guard spot. It'll be Darden from 25. Rebound Burns. Here comes Kendall leading the break. Louis Orr. Now it's Crosby, two on one with Grunfeld. And Grunfeld, what a good job. He, he saw the man setting up to try to pick up the charge, and Grunfeld walked around him. 11 for the Ernie half of the Ernie and Bernie show. I think you're exactly right. It didn't look like there was any way he could do anything other than run right into that man. He just glided on by. Syracuse had a chance to take the lead, but Tennessee denies. And now it's Burns fouled by Darden. First foul on little Johnny Darden. That'll send Marty Burns to the line with one and one looking at him. Beheim, very impressed with him and chatting with him this morning. Uh, Billy, a bright young coach at 32 at Syracuse, taking over for Roy Danforth, who now is running the Green Wave program at Tulane. He looks a lot younger than... Uh, than he appears to be in both his court presence and obviously he knows how to handle a ball club because he had some massive substitutions in his first half. Burns gets a kind bounce off the brace of the iron to make a 36-35 as Chuck Threats, T-H-R-E-E-T-H-S, a freshman from Lackawanna, New York, where his high school team was unbeaten last year, 6-6 for Tennessee and it's a lot of he wears 33. And we've got to get on, Jimmy, about that player because nobody from upstate New York is supposed to get away from Syracuse or St. Bonnie. In fact, uh, no basket, no free throw. Somebody invaded the lane prematurely, so that cost Syracuse the tie at 36-35. Four of the five starters for Syracuse within 100 miles of the campus at Syracuse. Bernard King. Oh, what a pass, but he got away. Burns makes the defensive play. Here comes Kelly. Surprised Tennessee has stayed in the same zone for so long. They haven't changed defenses very much in the last 10 minutes, and that's not like that. Primarily a 2 3 with a little matchup. Open is Bowie, and he can't hit the easy one. Roosevelt Bowie missed an easy shot. Here comes Tennessee. That's got to hurt Syracuse a bit emotionally. Crosby 
no basket. He shuffled his feet going up for the jumper. And that cost Tennessee a three-point lead. So it's 36-35, Syracuse heading up court. A real good ball player that's going to take that jumper wide open from the corner. He'll start getting his feet organized as the ball's coming to him rather than after he catches it, which is what Crosby does. Or to Burns, straight pass right through Bowie's fingertips. A Roosevelt Bowie having a rough first half, but from all we've heard, that shouldn't continue, that he has a lot of composure for a freshman. And we'll be seeing uh, some more effective play from that freshman in the second half. The fact that he's in there with, with the likes of Bernard King uh, might be a bit unsettling, too. Crosby can't connect, but there's the ever-present Grenfeld. Ernie Grenfeld has 13 to lead Tennessee. If you had asked me, Dick, how many points he had up to now, I'd say about six. It's incredible how he just flows along in the ballgame. Tennessee leading by three. We're in the final minute of this first half. 45 seconds. Kendall can't hit. Tipped it. Yeah. No, it does not go in, and it's out of bounds to Tennessee. So the Volunteers will have a crack at the last shot with 36 seconds. King and Grunfeld both with 13. How's that for balance? The two great stars for Tennessee. They're going to go out in half-court zone trap. Good move by Syracuse here. They're going to force a little tempo. Not going to let Tennessee to get off an easy one. 22 seconds. Dart, great ball handler. He's the first guy ever to play point guard as a freshman for Tennessee, which is quite an accomplishment. Now Syracuse moves back, makes him take a tough one. Grenfell to King. He'll shoot it. Can't get it. Rebound or Four seconds of time for a final shot. Two, one. It's short. And that's the end of the first half. And a good 20 minutes of basketball it was here at Assembly Hall on the campus of LSU. The score at halftime. Tennessee 38, Syracuse 35. Back to grandstand after these words from your local station. Peace and Mike Jackson with 10. More importantly, perhaps the foul situation, Johnson and Jackson, two of the Tennessee players, have three fouls. Johnson, the starting center, didn't score. For Syracuse, Syracuse has Dale Shackelford in foul trouble with three. Jimmy Williams, the lightning fast guard, 12 points to lead. A well-balanced Syracuse attack. Billy, the shooting percentage is team-wise in the first half. Now 48 and 37, that's 37 being for Syracuse. They didn't do well at all in the early part of the half. Then they started going with their inside game and played an awful lot better. Back to John Wooden's preface. Anytime a team is that far off in their shooting percentage, they should be uh, evening things out in the second half, which would mean Syracuse should be a potent force here. We'll see as we start Roosevelt Bowie and Reggie Johnson, the two freshmen big men jumping, and interestingly, neither scored in the first half. Rebounds, Grunfeld led Tennessee with eight, King had six, and five for Dale Shackerford to, to lead Syracuse. Grunfeld controls the tap. Tennessee gets the first chance to score in the second half. Mike Jackson with three fouls starting the second half. Grunfeld inside. Foul, and he oh. scores! Bowie fouled him, and Grunfeld got it in anyway. Boy, did he use his shoulder on that play. Just power supreme right here. Now watch him dip his shoulder in. He's going to take Bowie with him right here. Boy, a great play. That camera angle on that particular play showed you how strong Ernie Grunfeld is. Now Grunfeld looking for a 16th point. And then how soft he is, but he misses. Bowie gets the rebound for Syracuse. Kelly and Williams to backcourt for the Orangemen with Bowie in the middle. Burns and Shackleford at forward. Tennessee really went a long time with that 2-3 zone, and Syracuse started to pick it apart. Williams trying to find Bowie, and the ball goes out of bounds. How many times did we see that the first half? Syracuse wants to get the ball to the big guy, and they can't seem to do it. Nice play by Marty Burns, who helped out Bowie as he batted the ball away from Bernard King. This is Kelly. Short. Kept alive and saved by Grunfeld. Over and back. Grunfeld had already, or had he hit the sidelines. It was the sidelines call. Grunfeld was out of bounds. Dick, these are about as live of backboards and baskets as we've seen in a long time. Therefore, a lot of rebounds are coming out 10 to 12 feet away. Tennessee leading 40 to 35 as Kelly pumps and hits. Larry Kelly has four for Syracuse, and it's Tennessee's lead cut to three. Mike Jackson, he hits 42 35. 37 Tennessee. Boy, that's his shot from the wing. Of course, that's the position he plays for Tennessee, and you can't let him have that. 
They're sticking with that 2-3 zone. Syracuse did well getting the ball inside at the end of the first half. Burns inside for a 14-footer that's short. Mike Jackson embraces the rebound for Tennessee. The ball's with a five-point lead and a minute and a half gone in the second half. Inside King. Great save to Johnson. And Reggie Johnson scores, and he is fouled by Bowie. You what a play by him. King. You got to love him. Watch him come up. If we can see him, he's going to see the seam. He came up, met the ball, dishes inside with a left-hand hook pass. He's the best I've ever seen against his own from the inside. I wonder if we can see that again. It almost appears as if, Billy, that that King has eyes in the back of his head. He knew he was going to pass that ball to Johnson before he got the pass himself. Maybe we can take another look after this shot. And he was down in the low post. He felt an opening, went up to the high post. Here's that pass inside. Boom, right in there. Boy, he's a great player. And it becomes a three-point play for Tennessee's Reggie Johnson. And Syracuse now looks at an eight-point deficit. Kelly hits his second shot of the second half. 45-39 to score. Kelly has six. But even though Syracuse is falling behind, Tennessee zone lacks a lot of the quick aggressiveness that they usually use in it. It's very stationary. I want to remind fans, Billy, that we'll be going with you again Thursday. Four different regional games. Each of your regions will see one big game in the semifinals of the regionals. Grunfeld hits. 47-39. Grunfeld leads all scores with 17. Didn't even touch a thing. Every shot he's taken from the outside has gone straight through to that. That zone is packed way back in there, and obviously they feel Kelly being the only threat from outside. Louis Ors does not charge. He was blocked, they say, by Darden. Darden hadn't quite established himself. Along with a Thursday night single game on prime time here on NBC. Don't forget, next Saturday we'll have a triple header for you. The regional finals, and then it's on to the Omni in Atlanta for the NCAA championships in two weeks. What was interesting about that block by Darden, he's playing out at the top of the key and was all the way back inside to draw the charge. Williams free and hits it. Jimmy Williams, who leads Syracuse, has 14 points. Six-point lead. Tennessee in front. Three minutes gone. Second half. Not a good shot. But look at that King get another chance for Tennessee. Batted out by Burns. Grenfeld is there. He scores. No basket. Traveling. Grenfeld. Good call. He wasn't in position. He made a heck of a play just getting it off. Well, you talk about a team with the talent of King and Grenfeld, and with all the publicity, it is certainly deserved. These are two super players. Foul is on Williams for charging as he made the pass. He banged into the Tennessee defender. And it's a second foul on Williams. You know, you play the game with your hands and your feet, but a lot of times your head is the most important thing. And right there, Williams made a bad play, and right before that, Darden took a bad shot. Very costly mistakes in a game this tight. Syracuse now with a man-to-man -man defense. Williams on Darden, the two quickest men on the court. Johnson can't connect. Shackelford almost knocked it away from his own teammate, but handles the rebound. Look at that Williams fly down court. Jackson with a fake as he fell down, and the rebound by King. Darden. Think about Williams, it makes him so quick. It's with the ball, he goes faster than he does without it. Jackson, and a foul is on Kelly, number 11 of Syracuse. 47-41, Tennessee leads it. It'll be the Volunteers playing it from underneath their own bucket. First foul on Larry Kelly. You get a feeling this is a key time for Syracuse right here. They're down six, and Tennessee seems to be playing very well offensively. Oh, Grunfeld didn't get the hoop, however, but King rebounds. He can't hit it. Tipped in over the bucket by Johnson. Three easy chances. The ball wouldn't drop for Tennessee. Williams to Orr. That's got to be traveling, doesn't it? That's he scores. No traveling? That's what the Tennessee people think also. Unless the ball was tipped and the official was right there to see whether it was tipped Must by the Tennessee touched. people. Must have been touched. Darden can't connect. Look at that Grenfell, but he can't save it. Watch out as Grenfell goes right into his own coach's circle. Here's the play. Okay, let's, see. let's see if Johnny Darden doesn't know. He didn't get a piece of this. It just went out of his hand. That's got to be traveling. Yeah, you can't do that. Syracuse. Shackelford fouled by Reggie Johnson. 
And I believe that's four on Johnson. And that could be a very important play in this game. It comes with just a bit more than four minutes gone. And the big center for Tennessee has his fourth foul. And he comes out of the game replaced by Chuck Threets. So Threets at 6'6 six, six goes in for Johnson, who is three inches taller. What they may be interpreting that is that he lost his own ball on a fumble and recovered his own fumble, which he can do, of course. Looked like he was going up for a shot to me. This is not Threets, of course. This is Shackelford, although Threets wears the same numerals on the Tennessee jersey. Shackelford can't connect. You know, when Jimmy Beheim was talking to us earlier, Dick, he talked about how everybody on his club, with the exception of Jimmy Williams, has had a game where they've scored two or less points. And that seems to be happening today in the case of Shackelford and Bowie. Shackelford has only two, and he misses both free throws. So it remains a four-point Tennessee lead. Look at that. Grenfell go to the iron. And the foul is on Orr of Syracuse. Some drive. Grenfell can generate so much velocity. There's that tank coming through. Get out of the way, fellas. Nobody wanting to get in his way. I think a good call. Nobody from Syracuse was head up. Timeout with four and a half minutes gone, and Tennessee on top by six. This is the mark of the cat. New symbol of driving excitement for the cat set. Mercury Cougar XR7. A total new look for 77. Bold, strong, aggressive. More of a cougar than we've ever unleashed before. Deeply padded, richly luxurious, with a stance on the road that says, this is my private domain. And now XR7 unleashes more excitement. A pack of new cougar running mates. An elegant four-door brome, handsome, spacious, with a luxury ride engineered by Lincoln Mercury. More excitement in two-door hardtops and a sporty cougar wagon with rich wood tone paneling. Fresh from the lair and yards of cargo space. New luxury, new action for the cat set. See all the new cougars for 77 at the sign of the cat. Tennessee's Ernie Grunfeld going for the three-point play and looking for his 20th point of the game as Tennessee leads Syracuse 49-43. Grunfeld, the all-time career scorer at Tennessee, 2,223 points. Burns rebounds for Syracuse. Kelly brings it up. Tennessee still in the 2-3, and there's the men they want shooting. That's Larry Kelly. He's the gunner from outside, has eight points. Four-point Tennessee lead. King to Grunfeld. Look at that King leap, but he fouled in the process. That would be an interesting one to see again. He gets his feet underneath that great body in such beautiful position for the vertical leap. Watch it. Well, Ernie Grunfeld took a shot he really didn't want to, but there's Bernard King. I'll be honest with you, Dick. I think that was a pretty good rebound. He was going for the ball. And just happened to make the body contact. 49-45, Syracuse trailing Tennessee with 15 minutes left in this one at LSU. Tennessee changes up, goes man to man. I didn't expect them to stay in that defense all the time. Kelly can't hit, but Orr rebounds, can't score. A foul, however, on Threets of Tennessee, number 33. It'll be Chuck Threets' first foul, and that sends Lewis Orr to the line. Or played against the Russian junior team last year, scored 15 points. They kid him about his lack of weight. They say, if nothing else, you'll make all skinny this year. Say, the kid's had a good game today. He has indeed. 6'8 and 165 pounds. Trying to cut the lead to two. 49, 47, Tennessee. Dick, you get a feeling that Tennessee has a false sense of security in this game. If they're playing like they have a big lead, and yet Syracuse hangs right in there. Marty Burns with a foul in the backcourt, non-shooting violation. And for Burns, I believe that's his first foul. Second foul on Burns. Once again, Grunfeld used his power that time, being double teamed, just rammed the ball on through to draw the foul. Shackelford on Grunfeld, foul away from the ball. Bernard King apparently with an illegal pick. 
And for King, that's his third foul. Used an elbow in the process. Marty Burns did a good job with positioning that time. Bernard King trying to get position through the elbow. Syracuse with a basket can tie the game. 14 and a half minutes left. And they're man to man again. Trying to change up. Syracuse recognized well in that defense. Burns talked by Grunfeld defensively, and Grunfeld says, yes, I know, I fouled him, and Grunfeld has his third. So King has three. Grunfeld has three. Jackson has three, and Johnson four. So almost the entire starting lineup is a concern for Ray Mears. Their foul total continues to mount. That's a small ball club they have out there. Everybody has got decent size of Darden, but not a big man. Kelly ties it up for Syracuse. Larry Kelly makes it 40. 9.49. They have not recorded those two points on the scoreboard yet, however. Now they do. 14 Syracuse. minutes left. Syracuse back to man to man. Great steal by Shackelford to Williams. Ahead to Burns. One man to beat. It's Jackson. Go! Burns gives Syracuse the lead. And a small contingent of Orangeman fans across the way cheer as Syracuse leads for the first time since the first two minutes of the game. Timeout, 14 minutes left. Syracuse jumps in front of Tennessee, 51-49. Ron Taylor, the dry look. Pat Mahoney, the dry look look. Wait a minute. That's the dry look, but that's not. Oh, sure it is. It's the dry look max hole from Gillette. It's a pump spray, see? But it gives you the same dry, natural look. Oh, well, right. And it gives me a longer hole that's not stiff. Now, there's regular aerosol and max hold pump. There are two ways to get the dry look. And the dry look look. 1949. What about it? I used to use a one-bladed razor to shave with in 49. Hey, I just bought this. Maybe, but track two is how America shaves now, my friend. The first blade stretches the whisker out, so the second blade can shave it again, closer. Hey! Uh, listen, could I... Check your own, turkey. <laughs> <laughs> to 25 million Track 2 users, no one-blade razor comes close. Alan Arkin picks up Sally Kellerman and Mackenzie Phillips, and... I'm being kidnapped by these two girls. Call the police! In Rafferty and the Highway Hustlers, Monday. He burns his clutch player, and here's why, as he gives Syracuse the lead by two. Real good steal there, and as I said, there was a false sense security by Tennessee. There's Burns just slamming it through. 51 to 49, Syracuse in front with 13 minutes, 57 seconds left in the game. Dick, I'd look for Tennessee to come out and try to put some more pressure on defensively. They've kind of lulled themselves to sleep on a defensive end. Syracuse doing a good job picking away. Bernard King with the ball. Back to King. You could hear that war hoop of King, and he can't get it, however. Lewis Orr rebounds for Syracuse. That's the second tight shot that he's missed. Tennessee man to man now, but they're still not as aggressive as they normally are. They've lost some concentration on defense. Syracuse has picked up the momentum. They're starting to believe they can win this game. Louis Orr slithering underneath, but he throws it away. Darden made the defensive play for Tennessee. And now it's the Volunteers looking for the tying basket. Stolen by Shackelford. Darden to beat. Ahead to Williams, Jimmy Williams gives Syracuse its biggest lead, four points. It's going to be a change of the point guard position for Tennessee. That last pass really got Ray Mears upset. This is a good defensive team, Syracuse. They're really hawking in that man-to-man. -man. This is Jackson. Lost out of bounds by King, but it was touched last by Syracuse. As number 10, Bert Bertelkamp, a 6'3 freshman from Knoxville, Tennessee, Bearden High School, best Knoxville prospect since Jimmy England at 67, says Ray Mears, comes in. And you saw Darden take a seat on the bench. Bernard King, foul on Orr of Syracuse. Big King tried to get off a shot there, too, knowing that he'd been fouled. He's missed a couple of easy ones inside that he normally doesn't miss. But as uh, we commented, Billy, you have to hit that ball dead center on that hoop at either end or it just won't fall. Almost as if there are some magical springs kicking it out of there. Roosevelt Bowie, number 50, back in the lineup for Syracuse. Orr comes out. 
Both teams in that bonus situation. So now with this game being this tight with so many minutes to play, foul shooting is going to be important. Bernard King is a perfect four for four from the line. Syracuse lead is whittled to three at 53-50. You don't see that often if both teams get in one and one this early. Plenty, very important factor the rest of the way. Plenty of time, just under 13 minutes remaining. Syracuse leading Tennessee by two. We really have not had an upset in the entire first round of the tournament. Is this the time? Williams Kelly is the Kelly. score. Larry Kelly is hot in the second half. He now has a dozen. There's the halftime score. North Carolina, Charlotte, and Central Michigan battling a three-point game. Whistle before the shot, and the foul is underneath on whom? Foul is on Syracuse. Dale Shackelford, and I believe that is his fourth foul. So that's a big call against the Orangemen. Shackelford has four fouls, and he'll read be replaced now by Lewis Orr, the freshman, as we pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. Now, Dick, uh, here's a guy right here that can change the game with a lot of people in foul trouble because he draws a lot of fouls and has the ability to penetrate and is strong inside. Pretty difficult to stop him when you try to reach in. He's got 20 already. Foul trouble could be the big thing for both of these clubs. Who's going to get it? Tennessee maintains control, so they have a chance at a three-point play. They trail by three. Mike Jackson can't hit it. Rebound Burns. I'm impressed with him at 6'7". Great lockout job that time on King. Williams trying to get around Bertelkamp. Tough shot. And he won't get it. Rebound King. What position he had. There was no way Syracuse was going to get that ball. Boy, they're giving a real lecture out there and blocking out both King and Burns. Bernard King cuts the lead to one. It's 55-54. King now has 17. 11 minutes, 40 seconds remaining in the game. Two starters on the bench, one for each side. Shackelford with four fouls, Syracuse. Reggie Johnson, center Tennessee at four. Marty Burns can't hit it. It comes back outside. Burns saves it. Nice play. Or Kelly, Kelly says, let's hold it up, fellas. Let's get it well balanced and make our play. Boy, Ernie Grunfeld made a great play coming all the way over from his wing position to save that ball on the other side defensively. Clock ticking away, 11.06, 11.05, remaining in the game. Syracuse 55, Tennessee 54. You can see there's no pressure on the ball to speak of, so Syracuse can do about what they want to with it. Burns triple teamed in that zone, gets away, loses it, picked up by Williams, into Bowie, he's got his first bucket of the game. Roosevelt Bowie gives Syracuse a three-point lead. Make that four points for Bowie. Did not score in the first half. Mike Jackson. Boy, King and Byrne inside position game. He can't hit. There's the omnipresent Ernie Grunfeld. Makes it 57 56. Grunfeld, 22 points. Oh, man. And he. Well, we have seen just this weekend some great individual players. One point Syracuse lead as we approach the midpoint mark of this second half. Burns loses it. It's Chuck Breach who came up with the ball for Syracuse. Myrtle Camp now running the offense for Tennessee. He has scored only 22 points all year playing in 20 games. You don't expect him to shoot. But he has a pretty good looking jump shot, Dick, in the warm up, so I would think that he'd be a threat if he would take one. We're under the 10 minute mark. He knows what he's out there for, and that's to get the ball to the Bernie Ernie show. Oh, a little high, but Jackson climbs the ladder to keep it in play for Tennessee. Ooh, very patient ball club. They're starting to play. Uh, There's Renfeld. That's his shot. Can't hit it, and Bowie rebounds. Ahead to Kelly. Two on one. Kelly will shoot it and score it. Oh, he's made some clutch shots for Syracuse. 59-56. Kelly with 14. Foul will be on Bowie. Roosevelt Bowie caught out of position defensively. And for Bowie, that'll be his third, I believe. 
Or will it be his fourth foul? It's his fourth, and that's even more critical. Bowie has four fouls, the big giant 6'11 center. And time has been called by the Orangemen of Syracuse. You see the statistics, 9.07 remaining. And the score, Syracuse 79 and Tennessee 56. This happened real fast, but the insurance probably happened real slow. Nothing slow about Allstate. It's different with us because we put the world's largest staff of claim specialists to work for you. We'll take care of it. Allstate specialists devote all their time to claims, so you get a fast, fair settlement. Fast glass. When it takes being different to be better, Allstate will do it. That's a promise from us, the good hands people. Hello, everybody. This is Lowell Thomas, Alaska, a tough place to test car batteries, and that's why we took Motorcraft heavy-duty batteries to Alaska, testing them in 50 GM Chrysler and Ford cars and trucks. After six punishing months of Alaskan pipeline country, from cruel sub-zero winter to 90 degrees of summer, not one single battery failed. No matter what you drive, wherever you drive, ask for Motorcraft batteries from Ford. Tested tough in Alaska. So long. There's the Golden Dome of NBC. Joe Garagiola, and a reminder, Major League Baseball 1927 season is just around the corner. Joe has a great one-hour special for us on Sunday, March 27th, in the changing face of baseball, the title. And Joe will be giving his own unique touch to a mighty fine program. Airtime is 3.30 Eastern time. NBC Saturday Game of the Week coverage begins a doubleheader on April 9th. Here at... LSU's Assembly Hall, 9.07 remaining in the game. Syracuse leading Tennessee, 59-56. Bernard King has just made his 18th point of the game. He's the perfect five for five from the free throw line. 59-58. Nine minutes remaining. Tennessee still packed back in there. They're going to make Syracuse put that ball up from the outside and try to beat him off the board. Kelly has scored 12 points in the second half. That's Kelly with the ball. Garden back in for Tennessee. Kelly trying to feed underneath, deflected and intercepted by Grunfeld. Volunteers looking for the lead. Jackson did a good job of controlling that pass. He just wanted to catch it and keep it in play. Grunfeld gives the Volunteers the lead. Ernie Grunfeld scores again. 24 for Grunfeld. I don't think I've ever seen a guy want to take more big shots than he does. And Every time, it just seems like it's automatic for him. That's a definition of a winner, isn't it? He wants the ball when the tough times arrive. A lot of players say, no, let somebody else have it. He wants it. This is Roosevelt Bowie. He scores a tough angle shot by Bowie as he kisses it off the glass, 61-60. Garden back in the ball game after sitting down a while. I'm sure that Ray Mears' idea was just to keep him under control. King's pass was intercepted. Good alert defense by Syracuse. And the Orangemen with a one-point lead and less than eight minutes left. They're really giving Jimmy Williams the shot. Now here's where scouting comes in in a ball game. They're going to let him take the outside shot. And he, he will. And can't hit it. Followed in and out of bounds. It goes to Tennessee. Orr did a good job of getting his hands on the ball. Tried to tip it home, but it wouldn't find the net. Ray Mayer stays number 20. Ross Kendall returned to the Syracuse lineup. 6-2 junior. And Jimmy Beheim does a smart thing too. He said, wait a second, they're giving him the shot, so that makes that zone really tough on the other four guys. So he makes the substitution, puts Kendall into the game, give him a little bit more of an outside threat. Syracuse in his own, and that's Jackson way out. He's tough on the other four guys, so he makes the substitution, puts Kendall into the game. Give him a little bit more of an outside threat. Syracuse in his own, and that's Jackson way outside. Not there. Grunfeld can't get the rebound. Kelly does. Kelly will slow it up. But he better pick him up. He likes to stop and take that jumper. Shackelford weaves inside. Good move by Shackelford to make it 63-60 Syracuse. Less than seven minutes remaining, and the Orangemen of Syracuse trying to hand Tennessee an upset loss. Bernard King. Rattles it right back in for the Volunteers. 21 for King, and Grunfeld has 24, 45 total for the Bernie and Ernie show. Kevin Byrne being out of the ballgame was doing a great job 
against King, and now with him out of there, he's been able to get better position. See if Kendall tries one. No, they work it around the outer perimeter. You can see Darden's not even putting any pressure on that shot from the top of the key. It's available. Inside and stolen away. It'll be Tennessee's ball. Grunfeld picks it up. Feeds it ahead to King. Lost it for a moment, then he saves it to Richie Johnson. Johnson is back in for Tennessee. Mike Jackson, and he can't hit. Out of bounds. No, oh, one hand. King doesn't get it in a foul. Who's it on? It's on Mike Jackson of Tennessee. And if that is Jackson, it'll be his fourth foul. That King is on. How did he get the ball? That's what. Here's Jackson. He's going to shoot it wherever he can get on that wing position over there. Here's some good leaping. Great hands on the inside by King. He just stole the ball, almost made an incredible shot. He is really a hustler. So he makes that when they got a bronze it and sent it to the Hall of Fame. <laughs> At the line for Syracuse, Roosevelt Bowie. On those uh, wristbands of his, he has written Puddin, P-U-D-D-I-N. Puddin, he says, uh, as in sweet and smooth chocolate. I'll buy that. Puddin Bowie, all points scored in the second half. He calmly hits two pressure free throws, and Syracuse maintaining that three-point lead. Six minutes left in the game. Well, you start thinking now, thinking about somebody sitting on the ball, if you're particularly talking about Syracuse, and making Tennessee come out of that zone and playing man-to-man. -man. A whistle away from the ball. Bowie committed the foul, and that'll be all for Roosevelt Bowie. So this could be the most important foul of the game. Bowie is the first man to be disqualified. He fouled out only three times all year. Leaves the game. Does Bowie with a total of eight points. And look for Byrne to go back in there. That takes away a little bit of that inside power that Syracuse had. And Jimmy Behan going to take his time getting the substitute in there. Let's look at the other foul totals, Billy. Shackelford has four and or three for Syracuse. For Tennessee, King has three and Grenfell has three fouls. Johnson and Jackson have four fouls apiece. So each whistle kind of brings the old heart up in the throat for the head coaches in this game. Ray Beer says, come on, let's get somebody in there. And finally, number 44, Marty Burns checks in for Syracuse. I think Kevin, I met Marty. He really did a great job while he was in there. And of course, sat down, he's rested now. He's got five minutes to go in the ball game. Great position type man, and even though he doesn't have the 6, 9, or 10 frame, he's really been able to do an outstanding job inside. King misses his first free throw. He had been 6 for 6, and Burns immediately latches onto the rebound. This is a big trip down court for both teams. Syracuse leads by 3. If they can open up a 5-point lead with 5 minutes remaining, we might see a change in strategy. Kendall. Shackelford, Tennessee staying in that zone. Here you go, right now, it's time to take the ball back out and hang on to it a while, make Tennessee play somebody. And Tennessee's gonna have to pick up man to man. They can't afford to let the clock go by this long. 5.17, 5 minutes 16, 5 minutes 15 seconds left. Syracuse leading Tennessee. 65-62, the winner makes the victor of the UNC Charlotte game against Central Michigan. There's the man-to-man -man now. Tennessee forced to come out and pick up. Syracuse using the clock very well. Inside it goes to Burns. Grenfell on him. It's Burns. Oh! oh big, tough shot. Grenfell playing him eyeball to eyeball. 67-62 the score. 11 for Burns, his average. 4.45 left in the game. Stolen by Kendall. Oh, he, did he go out of bounds? No, he's all right. Kelly banks it, scores it. Syracuse, 59-62, their biggest lead of the game with four and a half minutes left. Tennessee needs a timeout right here. They're getting carried away with it. Jackson inside, almost turned over again. It goes out of bounds to Tennessee, and Shackelford came very close to intercepting the ball. Tennessee Great. a little confused right now. They went man to man. Syracuse attacked very well, and they're trying to play too quickly. Grenfell is blocked by Orr, and a foul on Orr. He got a piece of the shooter, Grenfell. They Gurney. Well, he said, I'm, "Thank you. You hit me in the head. I'll be okay." He said. You're gonna believe that Orr could knock down Grenfell. Now watch this right here. 
Ernie's gonna go right down, or at 163 pounds soaking wet. Ernie at what looks like about 280. Boy, he's powerful. And what a good kid. He is, uh, you hear nothing but superlatives about Ernie Grenfell from the men and women who know him best. He's just a class person. Senior, four straight years, first team all SEC, second team all American this year. And almost went to Syracuse. That's right, it came down to his choice was between Syracuse and Tennessee. And uh, Syracuse thought they had Grunfeld, but he elected to go the volunteer state. 69-64, clutch free throws by Grunfeld. But Syracuse with 4.20 left in the game has a five point lead. Big move right here, one three one half court zone press and they drop back, they're gonna pick up man to man or can't score. He didn't hold on to the ball, but Shackelford gets it back, tries to feed or and they lose it. That's One. a pass too many, Dick. Big turnover. Tennessee needs a bucket. Jackson fires. Won't go down. Rebound or the kid is playing quite a game. You have to wonder why Mike Jackson's taking a shot like that with possession being so important. They've got to get the ball inside to Bernard King and Grunfeld to try to draw some three pointers. Three minutes and 42 seconds remaining. Syracuse 69, Tennessee 64. Shackelford goes out of bounds, and was he forced out? I believe so, foul on Bernard King. That's four fouls on King. So three Tennessee players are in the game with four fouls. King, Jackson, and Johnson. At the line, Dale Shackelford. Excuse me, Dick. Syracuse really doing a fine job with substitutions today and keeping their composure when they were behind early in the ball game. And I just got that feeling of a false sense of security on the part of the Tennessee club. I don't think they're out of this game yet, but I think when they had a chance to put it away, they took away that concentration they had early. And you could see that Syracuse in this second half got that look in the eye. We believe it's 70 to 64 with three and a half minutes left. They've got to get the ball inside the king. There's Reggie Johnson, going to be goaltending. I don't think the ball would have gone in anyway, but number 33, Shackelford, hit it on its downward flight, and timeout has been called. Let's see uh, whether or not, well, how many times do we see guys try to block the ball or goaltend the ball anyway you want to put it. It's or going up there, and he's making the, the goaltending violation. Here's an angle right here. I'll show you. When you're right up under that basket and you go up for the ball, it's almost always goaltending violation. Now the score is 70 to 66. Four point difference in the game. Three minutes, 25 seconds remaining. It's been a grand game, and we're pleased you've joined us from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. A reminder that during the past two seasons, more than 45 million people have witnessed the fast-paced fun and excitement of NCAA college basketball. The demand for college basketball is really greater now than ever before. Since 1967, 168 new arenas have been constructed across this country. Over 700 NCAA institutions are currently competing in this game of basketball on the varsity level. NCAA colleges continue to produce the finest basketball players in the world as judged at Montreal this past summer once again. The preceding announcement furnished by the NCAA. Three minutes, 25 seconds remain, a 70 to 66 game. And a reminder that we'll be back with you on Thursday night, four different games. You see the earlier contest today as University of Detroit will play Michigan in the first game on Thursday night as those two schools from the Wolverine State were victorious. And as soon as Detroit beat Middle Tennessee, they started chanting, we want Michigan, we want Michigan. Two on one, will Kendall shoot? Yes, he will. Boy, that's and a well-coached ball club right there. They knew that Tennessee was gonna come out and press full court. They recognized the field. King negates the basket by Kendall. Here comes Grenfell. Grenfell for the steal. Grenfell can't hit it. Tipped out by Tennessee. So it'll be Syracuse with the ball and a 72-68 lead. Grunfeld, had he made that one, that might have turned the game inside out because they would have pulled Tennessee within two. They're picking up full court right now. Syracuse needs to get the ball back outside. Relax a little. Oops, Jackson going for the ball, commits his fifth personal foul. That will be all for Mike Jackson, the wing guard for Tennessee. Jackson leaves the game with 12 points. 
on the season. He was the third leading scorer for Tennessee, averaging 15 and a half. So Jackson, the first volunteer to be disqualified. We'll check on Mears replacement. It's number 30, Terry Crosby. So with this man-to-man -man defense that Tennessee's going to have to go into when it gets back down to a half-court defense, you'd be looking for Jimmy Williams to come back in the game, Dick. Uh, he's got that blazing speed and quickness to blow by people in the man-to-man, -man, especially after Syracuse was spread it out. I'm surprised that Syracuse has not tried to control the ball and freeze it a little sooner. They're still playing with it. They're still shooting. They're going after it. Larry Kelly, what a second half Kelly has had. 15 of his 17 points have been scored in this second half. They have that five straight years in the NCAA. You can see Syracuse. These kids are playing with a lot of poise and under real pressure here in Baton Rouge. Darden underneath to Johnson, wide open. Nice Johnson. And a violation against Syracuse. No basket. Syracuse and inbounding the ball stepped over the baseline, I believe. It'll be Tennessee's ball at the other end with a score 74-70. Or was it just a, an official timeout? No, no, he turned over the line. What happened right there, I think the Shackleford saw a man wide open and just tried to make a play too quickly. Whistle before the ball is inbounded. Foul is on who? Orr. Number 55 Orr, and that, I believe, is his fifth foul. So Orr has fouled out, and that means that young Jim... Beheim has lost his two big men, the two freshmen, Bowie and Orr, have both fouled out. Orr leaves with six, but his value to the team has been on the boards and defensively. And now Beheim is strapped. He doesn't have any big men left. Well, he's got the clock left, although he didn't use up any of it there. And he's got 2.39 to go, and we'll be getting the ball back. I think right now he's discussing, should they go ahead and just sit on it for a while? He does have Robert Parker, a 6'9 senior from Rochester, New York, on the bench. He is the biggest man left, but in this situation, a four-point ball game and two and a half minutes left, do you put in a man who hasn't played much all year, or do you put in a smaller man with more experience? He is He's talking, talking to Bill Park. Drew, isn't he? I believe that is Drew, the 6'5 junior. I believe he's talking to Parker right now. Oh, is that Parker in there? Yeah. Now, what he's doing, too, he's using his full 60 seconds. I think Ray Mears is going to get on him in a minute. This is Parker, 6'9", senior from Rochester. Interesting guy. In high school, he was a goalie in soccer and a pitcher in baseball. He's a big kid. Averaged just two points a game this year, and now Syracuse will call a timeout. Robert Parker, pressure on him, but he's played well in the NCAA. He scored eight against Kentucky and six against Louisville two years ago. We'll be right back. Syracuse leads by four. Tires you can trust. B.F. Goodrich. The other guys. Yeah, this one's going to wrap up this first round of action. We started with 32 a couple of days ago. It'll be whittled down to 16, and we'll have all the matchings for you on Grandstand to follow our telecast from Baton Rouge. That's Reggie Johnson at the line. Big free throw, and he makes it. 74-71 the score. Crosby got in that lane awful quickly that time, and you can expect Tennessee in a full court pressure right after this foul shot. 74-72. There, there they, they are. 1-2-1-1 one, one, one press. Deflected out of bounds by Dart. And the guy that really has all eyes back here is Ernie Grunfeld, looking to be the guy to intercept any long pass. Shackelford helps out of the backcourt. The pass ahead to Kelly, three on one. Kelly into Parker, just in the game. Blocked beautifully. Hardy Burns with a great play getting his hands on that ball. They're going to hang on to it a while. And Kendall Hawk by Darden with 220. Syracuse leading by only a basket. Shackelford inside, almost stolen, and the foul is going to be on Grenfell. He almost had the ball. He got the foul his fourth. Good pass by Kelly. He's had an outstanding second half, and here's Parker coming in. Of course, Reggie going up there and getting a good block on it, but then Marty Burns, the guy going to the foul line here, just made a great play, Dick, on that loose ball. Burns, 6'7", junior, averaging 10 points a game, a fair free throw shooter, 61%. Boy, he followed through on that one, though. Right down the bottom of the well for his 12th point of the game. You know, a lot of times, Dick, a guy with four percentage shots has a lot of cuts down in the wire. He can stick them in there. 
and he does cleanly 76 72 and Syracuse has been tough at the free throw line in the second half. Tennessee can't afford to waste a lot of clock. Darden oh, bangs in a 25 footer. Johnny Darden makes it 76 74. Less than two minutes left in the game. Two on one. Kelly gives it off to oh, They had the shot and now they give an indication they want to kill that clock because they had a pretty good 10 footer. A minute 45 left. Syracuse 76, Tennessee 74. Tennessee led by as much as 10 first half. Syracuse came back second half. Their biggest lead was seven points. Jack Oford, and he was fouled. There's the biggest play of the game. I believe Bernard King fouled out on the play. So not only does Syracuse get two big points, they have fouled out. The player of the year in the Southeastern Conference, All-American Bernard King. King leaves the game with 23 points. 23 for King. What a great athlete he is. Boy, that was a super shot in there. You know, it's amazing about the Syracuse players. Some of them statistically had bad first half, but there's Dale Shackford coming back. He's been super down here in the last six minutes of this, uh, this ball game. That's, I guess, the, the credit when your coach says, I don't have a great individual player, and here's Bernie and Ernie, two outstanding players for Tennessee. Syracuse, by contrast, just balanced. Here's Shackleford, only five points in the game, and then he makes that big shot for his sixth and seventh points and gets King out of the game at the same time, and that was a tough percentage shot with King just nose-to-nose -nose with you. Tennessee going to call a timeout. They're trying to make Shackleford think about it as long as possible. Shackleford, by the way, is one for four.